del mano pelo veil. A document dated 1640 says that the veil arrived in mano pelo in 1506. A stranger gave it to a certain Giacomo Lionelli, begging him to take care of it and assuring him that he would benefit from it. In 1618, a descendant of Lionelli sold it to a notary to ransom her husband, a soldier named Pancrazio, from prison. In 1638, the notary gave it to the Capuchins, who cut off the torn part of the veil and put it into the frame and the sanctuary where it is still kept. In 1646, the donation was authenticated. Did they wait for the death of Pope Urban VIII and the expiry of the order to hand in all copies of the Veronicas? For four centuries, the Holy Face, locked in a side altar and exhibited only once a year, was honoured only in Abruzzo. In 1999, Father Pfeiffer, a professor at the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, declared so getting himself into trouble regarding his reputation as an expert of the Holy Shroud, that the Roman Veronica had been found in Manopello, and that the Holy Face was none other than the ancient Camulia. How could he say so? The veil of Manopello is as transparent as a slide, just like the Veronica and the ancient Camulia. Being equally visible from both sides, it embodies both the mandilion, which has eyes and hair turned to the right, and the keramion, which has eyes and hair turned towards the left. It has traces of the passion, the blow from the stick on his nose, his beard torn, stains of blood on the forehead, open eyes, the expression in his eyes is calm and he looks as if he's smiling. The measurements of the face match the measurements of the face on the shroud. Depending on the vantage point and the time of day, the colours and brightness change, as all the documents describing the Acheiro Poeti of the Lord say. Currently, we don't know who, when, with what techniques or what media could have painted both sides of a veil with different images without creating any obstacle to rays of light. Look at the similarity to the Mandilion when photographed against a dark surface, especially the eyes, forehead, nose. In this fresco, Beato Angelico, in Rome for Pope Eugene IV in 1445, seemed to want to portray the holy face. Look at the shadows around the eye sockets, his lips, beard, eyes, the curvature of his albroys, eyebrows, the moustache and the way it is attached to the lips. Equally striking is the resemblance to this painting by Roger van der Weyden, made in 1452 after a pilgrimage to Rome for the holy year of 1450. It is known that the drawings of Weyden were considered as a model by Antonello da Messina and Hans Memling and affected all Flemish painting. The rediscovery of the holy face clarifies the source. In Christ Crowned with Thorns, by Hans Memling, and in the Holy Face, the bruise on the cheekbone caused by Malpas is quite evident. The cut of the eyes is similar in both faces. If we overlap the Holy Face and the Shroud on a one-to-one -one scale, the features of the Holy Face perfectly coincide with those of the face of the Shroud. Just as Ananias, the 
painter of King Abgar could not portray our Lord, it is equally difficult for us to photograph the veil. If you use a flash, the image shines like when you photograph water or a transparent material. Moreover, depending on what the camera decides to focus on, you either see the texture of cloth or the wounds or the mouth more or less open with blood stains on the lips. These photos were taken without a tripod just to give the idea. Like Emperor Constantine the Seventh, we're not able to say when the veil was in contact with Jesus' face. If it was offered to him by Veronica on the steep way to Calvary, or if the Sudarium is the one that Peter and John saw in the tomb on Easter morning. What is important is Jesus. And Jesus is neither the creator nor a creature. He is both. He is also a creature, and nevertheless he remains the essence of all things, because he is God. He is the essence of trees, flowers, the heavens, mountains, lakes. <laughs> 